everybody, it's Nate and Steph from Adventure in a Backpack, and today we are going to be talking about how we afford to live on the road. Um, this is kind of going to be basically like a part one of two, because this one is not going to be talking about what we do to make money. It's just going to be talking about um, ways we save money, um, yeah, basically things that we don't spend money on, things that we do spend money on, and um, how we how we cut cut down on our expenses so that we don't, we aren't living like an extravagant lifestyle. Um, the living on the road is, is, it's kind of tough, um, mentally to begin with because you kind of feel like you're on vacation and I don't know about you guys, but on vacation, typically you spend more money. Um, you go out to eat all the time. Like, yeah, you're just, you just let the money flow when you're on vacation. Um, and when you first move into a van or start traveling full time in any way, um, it can be pretty easy to let that happen, um, for a little while. And then those expenses just add up and up and up because, you know, you're living on the road rather than just Vacation. going for a week. Yeah. Okay. So let's jump right into, um, the things that we do to cut down on, um, our expenses on the road. So let me get my list pulled up. Um, okay. So the first one is basically we don't really eat out. We very, very rarely eat out. Um, we don't, we don't go to restaurants. That's just not something that we're passionate about. We like, uh, Nate, I should say Nate likes to cook. Um, so he cooks us dinner. Um, we cook breakfast here and then usually we have just some kind of quick lunch on the road. Um, but yeah, we, we really aren't eating out very much at all. I mean, gosh, I can't even remember the last time we ate dinner out. Um, and if we are eating out, it's usually for networking purposes. We're, we're going to meet somebody. Um, we're, yeah, I think this is, on that. I think this is overall something that we used to struggle with. Even when we lived in a regular house was, was going out to eat. Uh, it's, but yeah, I mean, that's something we're not passionate about, so we don't spend money on it. And let's, let's talk about that a little bit more. Um, it's okay to go out and eat. Like if that's your thing, like if you like going out and, uh, seeing like the, whatever the local hot spot to eat is, you know, that's what you're passionate about. We, yeah. we're not passionate about food. Like we could care less. Like it would be so much easier if we just never had to eat. Like, it's not like a passion that we have. Yeah. We've got some friends that they go, they travel around and they check out ice cream spots and they, they rate ice cream spots based on their good tasteability and tasteability. Uh, that's a good word. Good tasteability, and it's like it's something they're passionate about. Like I don't feel I don't feel like it's 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 right to say one ice cream is better than another because I think all ice cream is great. And so, but it's like it's their thing. But you know, it's it's not something that we're going to go out and do. Whereas you know, somebody who's got one set thing, they're not going to go out and spend. X amount of money on these high end mountain bikes, you know, if you don't yeah. mountain bike. So, so basically what that boils down to is, is don't spend money on stuff that you're not passionate yeah. about. Think of, think of what you really truly want to spend money on and, um, make that your priority. Yeah. Like Nate said, the Vagaboos, they, they go to, um, they go to all of these different ice cream shops and that's awesome. I, I love, I love their different rating scales and everything. I love reading about it and everything. I can't eat ice cream, so it doesn't help me, but, um, but yeah, so then that kind of moves us into the next one. What we do go to is breweries. We do spend um, a little bit of money here and there on going to breweries and um, finding finding good beers in different cities, microbreweries. Mm -hmm. um, but even that, we don't really. I can't say that. Like, I can't say that we're severely passionate about that we definitely enjoy going to breweries and relaxing and everything um but a lot of times again we're networking when we go mm -hmm. um like very rarely do we go to a brewery just the two of us just for the sake of go like we're not driving down the road and be like oh hey a brewery let's stop in like 100 percent of the time not even like 90 percent of the time like 100 percent of the time we are going there for a purpose and usually that purpose is a regrouping our strategic thing we've got going on between adventure in a backpack and our other business and it's like so we're regrouping our lives 
and we need a beer we need to leave our phones in the van and we need to go in there and figure out what exactly it is that we're trying to accomplish with life and the other like 90 percent of the time i don't know was there like 30 percent of the time and then 90 percent of the time yeah sure go for it i'm not really good at math but uh you know so anyway the other the other portion of the time we're there for networking we're there to further adventure in a backpack make these networking connections meet up with friends even like we'll go have beers with friends if we're passing through an area yeah so, or like our fans i mean that's that's one thing we mm -hmm. love to do for, is, is so I, said, I said friends fr friends yes friends fans friends they're they're our new friends <laughs> yes um you know if if we're passing through an area and you guys live in that area like shoot us a message we'll we'll buy you a beer definitely that's um that's that's something that we love to do we mm -hmm. love to meet people we love to um yeah just go have a beer we mm -hmm. probably won't go out to dinner with you but we'll we'll go for a beer with you <laughs> yep um another thing i will say about that I, this isn't on the list so i'm kind of going off on a tangent here is it, breweries are another great place to find adventures in a in a yes. town so that it's a great place to go and sit at the bar and chat with the chat with the bartender and find our next adventure so again kind of a, a purpose motivated um reason to go into a, a brewery um so the next thing let's see um the next way we save money is um when we go it's this is kind of a counterintuitive way to think about this but when we go grocery shopping um we go in this this won't work for everybody it, it won't work for everybody but but we go in with a very vague list and that's why i say it's, it's very counter counterintuitive i think most people that are doing money saving tips say you go to the grocery store grocery store with a specific list the reason that we don't go in with a specific list is because we go straight to the meat counter and find what's on sale what meat is on sale that week and then we plan our meals around that. So we're we're going to we're always going to be buying something that's you know the cheapest meat, whether that's chicken or beef. This this week we had like um, sirloin steaks were on sale, and so we've been eating steaks all week because they were cheaper than just regular ground beef. Um, so so and, and then we plan our meals around that. So like I said, we go in with a list of the specific things that we need to have, mm -hmm. like if we need toilet paper or if we need um salt and pepper or whatever whatever it may be we put those on a list but then the main meals we don't plan yeah if you if <laughs> if you let's see and this is going back to kind of like my fitness days but like going to a, going on a list is is good and everything but that's whenever things get expensive it's like i need to have sirloin or i need to have this product this product um you know we're not eating ramen every night like times aren't that tough right now <laughs> so um you know if you're if you have to stick to if you have to stick to a list if you don't make a list and you regularly find yourself in the uh the oreo aisle you know, picking up five bags of Oreos uh, for, you know, four dollars each. Yeah, which are fantastic. But, you know, then if you don't have that kind of self-control, that won't work for you. You need to have a list. In that case, have a list. Like, yeah. If having a list saves you money, that's something. Do what, you know, hike your own hike. That's what whatever works for you. Right. You know, that's uh, but whatever works for you, stick with it. But I, I will also say on that, especially when you're traveling, is um, be flexible on that list. Um, to, to the extent of sales or um, things that are overpriced. Um, for example, when we were in Alaska, just outside of, uh, or we were in Denali National Park, um, and the grocery store that was closest to Denali National Park, um, we, we stopped in to get a few things and um, we were out of milk. So milk was on our list. And um, we went there and th their milk was $14 a gallon. Yeah, it was and, a half gallon for $7. Yeah. So. For, yeah, fourteen yeah. gallon, fourteen dollars for a gallon. We, our plan was to buy a gallon of milk. Um, yeah, no, I'm not going to pay fourteen dollars for a gallon of milk. That's ridiculous. Yeah, so, so it's one of those things. It's like you know, you just have to weigh weigh your options. So, kind of going back on another story. This is kind of minor story time. <laughs> um, so, when we went to Alaska last year, we were headed across the Alaska Canada Highway, and sometimes we don't have a really good way of telling how big or small a city is, and. We have a really scientific way of determining. I ha I don't think you can take credit for this. No, that's you. Um, this is all I right. have a really scientific way of finding out how big or small a city is, and it's by when we're looking at a map, uh, specifically a paper map, um, 
like the size of the font on the map. So if it's like just regular like 12 point font on the map, probably a small town. If it's like 12 point bold, maybe a little bigger, you know, maybe it has a grocery store, uh, that kind of thing. We saw this one town, it's called Destruction Bay. It was up in the Yukon, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yukon territory. And it was in like 14 point font, like bold. And I was like, ah, oh, it's going to be like an actual town, like Destruction Bay. That's kind of ominous, but, you know, hey, <laughs> we'll roll with it anyway. And we get there, and it's got a gas station, an RV park, and I think it had, it had like a little bed and breakfast slash convenience store kind of. Slash restaurant, like, yeah. Slash all... hostel kind yeah. of deal. And anyway, we went in there, and it was like, mustard was like $9 for a little uh, little thing of it, like convenience store size mustard. Uh, they had They had like frozen uh meat there uh but it was like the the cheapest thing was like 28 dollars a pound for like a thing of ground beef and so it was like obviously like <laughs> there yeah not a good spot <laughs> and so basically we ended up and then that's when i'm talking about you know it's like there's times you need to spend money but then there's times you need to save money so we got like some six dollar because we were out of food o-u-t out of food yes and that so was horrible planning we, on our own yeah part. so yeah we totally uh, misjudged how you know, grocery stops. Uh, so we bought like a $6 pack of hot dogs, which is the cheapest thing they had. And we had some white rice left over. So we had some hot dog and white rice stir fry. So sometimes we eat steaks. <laughs> Times were tough. Sometimes we eat steaks every night. Sometimes we have hot dog stir fry. So it's, you kind of have to weigh your options. When can you spend a little more money? When should you not spend more money? And yeah, basically think about it. Shop with a purpose. Shop with a purpose. Okay, so can we move on? Okay, yeah, I'm over. <laughs> I'm done. Um, okay, so uh, this this one is still kind of on groceries, and then I promise we will move on from groceries. But don't buy snacks at, at convenience stores. If you can help it, don't buy snacks at a convenience store. Um, a bag of chips for $6 at a convenience store is just not worth it. Um, so what we do, even if, even if we are... Um, needing a snack, even, even when we, even before we had the, the van, mm -hmm. um, if we were on the road and just needed to stop in a snack, we would still stop into a grocery store mm -hmm. for a quick snack yeah. because the prices are always cheaper. Um, typically you can get a little healthier option too. You know, yeah. Like... You've got more, you've got better options. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be eating a Snickers and, um, a can of Red Bull for $12, Yeah, but, um, yeah, Snickers and a Red Bull for dollar and a half at a grocery store right exactly so <laughs> or something healthier <laughs> or, or, or something healthier um yeah but so pretty much we we really never we never buy anything at um convenience stores um when we stop for gas we buy gas and then we move on if we need snacks we're going to go to a grocery store okay perfect so the next one is going to be troubleshooting your own repairs like if you're traveling full-time you Hmm. Honestly, should have the mental and physical capacity to at least attempt to diagnose your own repairs. Um, something. <laughs> Sparta's dreaming right now. That's adorable. Um, Sparta, buddy. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, so, um, what are we talking about? Oh yeah. Troubleshooting. Troubleshooting your own repairs. Like, I'm not saying like you need to be able to like tear apart like a rear axle on the side of the roadway, like to fix your problems, but like at least have an idea, at least be like, oh, Hey, my ABS and EPS and traction control on my van, uh, the lights, the warning lights all came on at the same time. What does that mean? Rather than immediately going to, uh, immediately taking it to a dealership like pull over look it up on youtube like there's enough crowdsourced repair going on right yeah, now google it google everything just google it and then you can at least have an idea that way like if you do have to take it into a shop uh you know you're not going to get taken advantage of or see if it's even worth taking it into a shop maybe it's just a blown fuse they can be like oh yeah if this is going on check fuse number eight mm -hmm. and then you can check it oh hey look it's blown so that's that. Yeah, that say that honestly saves us a lot of money is mm -hmm. just being able to troubleshoot on our own and narrow it down to where we know that it's not just something simple like a blown fuse or an an fuel filter that needs to be changed or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um so 
Okay, moving on to the next one. Uh, campgrounds. Uh, we rarely, rarely, rarely stay at a campground. Usually if we uh, stay at a campground, it's for a strategic purpose. Either we have to be in a specific area or we need Wi-Fi, which doesn't really happen anymore with our WeBoost and AT&T service. Um, mm -hmm. That's pretty much that. But yeah, like campgrounds, you can, wow, you can really um, sink some money into campgrounds. Uh, T cheapest campgrounds typically what twenty five dollars a night. Yeah, if you like, don't want any like with no hookups. Yeah, with no hookups, twenty to twenty five dollars yeah. a night is the cheapest you can find, mm -hmm. and that adds up quick. Twenty dollars a night, twenty yeah. to thirty dollars a night, and then if we're talking um, with hookups, I mean minimum forty five a night. Yeah, I mean thirty is I think the cheapest we've ever seen for full full hookups. So yeah, you're talking And that's like in the middle of nowhere full mm -hmm. hookups. Yeah, so it's like we really, really decrease our um our spending on not using campgrounds. Uh what do we use? You know, we use Bureau BLM land, Bureau of Land Management land, uh National Forest land. Mm -hmm. Uh we use There's a few different websites that we use to... um to help us find some find some free campsites so there's free campsites not dot net is one of them um campendium campendium i overlander i overlander is a good one um and then uh boondockers welcome is another good one to use uh it, it it's not free but it's like 40 bucks a year so it's super cheap mm -hmm. um and you you can stay on people's land mm -hmm. Um, using that same thing with harvest hosts is the same the same theory it's it's again like 30 or 40 bucks a year um, and you stay at like f uh, farms or ranches or uh, yeah. vineyards um, and we'll do yeah. we're gonna do a video over how we find free free to cheap camping yes. uh, free to very 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 cheap camping yes. uh, we'll do that one if we get enough uh, interest on it so if you're interested in that leave us a comment below yes um, definitely yeah, that one's on that one's on the bubble <laughs> on the bubble <laughs> Um, okay, so that was campgrounds. The next one, um, another app that we use to save money um, while we're traveling is Gas oh, Buddy. Yeah. Um, gas Buddy is basically an app that finds the cheapest gas around you. So as you're driving down the highway, it's easy to just see that big sign um, for a, a travel stop and pull off, get gas, and get back on your way. Um, but what Gas Buddy does is it shows you what's in the area. Um, and so you may see that that travel stop that's you know three dollars a gallon for gas, and then a mile down the road is another gas station that's two seventy five a gallon. So you know twenty five twenty five cents per gallon spread over a full tank, spread over your traveling full time. It ad it really adds up. Mm -hmm. And so we definitely we use Gas Buddy not only to find cheaper gas, but then also to um, to decide whether or not it's worth it so if we're going to drive 20 miles out of our way to find gas that's 10 cents cheaper no we're not going to do it we're just going to mm -hmm. pay for the uh, more expensive one yeah yeah i know like right especially if you're on the interstate the inter back roads aren't quite as bad honestly but like right on the interstate you know you've got like <laughs> flying j and ta are the worst about like uh, some, I mean, I've seen their, their fuel prices are sometimes 70 cents a gallon more mm -hmm. than like three blocks on down the road, um, which, you know, you think 70 cents, I mean, you know, 10 cents a gallon is like over, over 20 gallons. It's like, that's, that's two bucks, you know? So it's like, I mean, that's a, that's enough of a difference once you multiple tanks, but 70 cents a gallon, that's, that's a you know, over 20, 20 gallons, that's 14 bucks. And, you know, whenever we were traveling from Ottawa to, Salt Lake, we took like a week where we were filling up every single day. And so, you know, you figure 14 bucks every day, you know, that's, that's a lot. It starts, that? adding, starts adding up. So anyway, mm -hmm. use gas, that's buddy. That's like three beers. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> like find cheaper gas. It's out there. Yes. Um, okay, so I got lost. Oh, here. No, uh, no nickel and, uh, oh, yeah, nickel and dime good. spending. That That is something that um, is really, really tough to overcome. Um, and when I say nickel and dime spending, I'm talking about, you know, a dollar here and three dollars there, five dollars here. Um, you know, there are activities out there that it, it seems like it's not very much because it's like, oh, well, it's just a dollar per person or it's just five dollars mm -hmm. per person or it's just five dollars for the car 
to go into this. Um, but when you're traveling full time and you're doing this all the time, um, five dollars adds up. Five dollars here and there, three dollars here and there, and then it it also I feel like it also plays into a mental game of. When does it go from, okay, I'm fine with spending a dollar to, okay, I'm spending, I'm fine with spending $3 and then from $3 to $5 and then $5 becomes $20 and then you're okay with nickel and diming yourself to $20 mm -hmm. each activity. And what really comes to mind for that is uh, state parks. So in the majority of states, uh, you have to pay a day use fee for state parks, uh, typically like five bucks, five to 10 mm -hmm. bucks. And yeah, I mean, sometimes it's worth it if there's a like a particular spot you're trying to get to, a particular swimming hole that you know has good reviews or you've been there before and you're willing to spend that five to ten bucks. But sometimes it's like in just you have to spend that five to ten dollars to, to investigate an area. And most of the time, if I don't know something's there, I typically won't investigate it. I, I typically yeah. it's not worth my five to ten bucks uh, per per day, honestly. Yeah, we um, actually made this mistake just the other day and um, we went into an area we had seen the whole we had been driving and seeing the lake and everything and it was gorgeous everything looked calm we really wanted to paddleboard on it and so we pulled in and it was a three dollar day use fee and we decided and they wouldn't let us go down and check it out um, before we paid so we decided okay we'll go ahead and pay the three dollars go down paddleboard the lake looks gorgeous um, so from what we could see from the highway so let's go down and paddle mm -hmm. so we got down there um, we we once we got down there it was immediately like oh man because it was very choppy um it was really windy out and the lake was gross right there Super where nasty. where the boat ramp was mm -hmm. um so we got we ended up paddling for about 20 minutes before we decided it wasn't worth it and mm -hmm. so we left we we left within an hour of spending the three dollars yeah so yeah, so that's, that's yeah. pretty much that. Yeah, so <laughs> we try to avoid doing that. We do make mistakes every once in a while, but um, we try to avoid that. Um, and then that being said, like seeking out cheaper alternatives mm -hmm. for any um, for any activities that that you're going to go on. So things like uh, national parks come to mind. Mm -hmm. um, national parks, if you don't have a national parks pass and you aren't going to get the use out of a national parks pass. Like a season pass. Yeah, the, the annual pass. Um, going to a national park for one day versus going maybe across. Most national parks are surrounded by national forest. National parks require a an entry fee. National forests don't. So most of the time you can see very, very similar landscapes um, with less people um but also with less services mm -hmm. in the surrounding area of a uh, national park so something that comes to mind is arches national park in moab um, beautiful national park loved it um, it was it was absolutely gorgeous but what i enjoyed more actually was outside of arches national park is corona arch so the the, the arches are are all around that area they're not just in the national park um but Corona Arch is on BLM land, and so it's free to use. You go out there, it's like a mile and a half hike in, I think, or maybe it was a three, three mile, miles, three yeah. mile hike in, um, and, and, and it was a relatively easy um, hike. You go out there, and there's not very many people out there. It's a lot. I mean, it's... You can it's, walk right underneath the arch. Yeah, you can you go know. right up to the arch and everything. It's beautiful views, and it's all free. Mm -hmm. And then something else, like, kind of on that same note is seek out, seek out alternatives. Um, if, if you're good with spending money on a particular thing, like if you're going snow skiing, let's just, let's talk about snow skiing. Yeah. Let's say you're going to take a trip snow skiing. Rather than taking, you know, then you know going out to the mountain and then buying your lift tickets once you get there like buy them in the summertime if you know what's going to happen typically like i know like steamboat and winter park they offer like a like a four-day pass that you can use any time during the season it's kind of like a little mini season pass if you will that's way 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 like what a quarter of the price of, of if you were to buy of four days individual, individual. Yeah. so it's like if you know you're going to go skiing buy that pass buy that four-day pass and then just you know whenever you go then use it uh so it's like if you know you're going to spend money, seek out these other alternatives to where you can spend less money. If it's a tour operator, you know, I'm not saying go with the, um, you know, if you search for Google, if you search for rafting companies uh, in the in the Grand Canyon, um, 
you know, I'm not saying like, don't go with somebody on the first page because that's also how I make my money in search engine <laughs> optimization. But if you want to save money, go to the second page because the people in the second page haven't paid, you know, somebody like myself to per get their page to the first page of Google. And so their prices are probably gonna be a little cheaper, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, so basically what that boils down to is do some extra research, do a little bit more legwork and you'll save money in the long run. Exactly. Um, sorry. Let's see. Oh, and, and I kind of do want to go back to that because I had one more note on that. Um, getting off the main strip of touristy areas in general will get you to, not only will it get you to less expensive places, like less expensive restaurants and, um, you know, less touristy things, but it'll also get you to the places where the locals actually go and hang out where, you know, because locals don't hang out in the super, tu super touristy places. Um, and, and so if you're wanting to get more of a, an authentic locals experience, get off the main strip, go, go down some back roads or ask a local where they go to eat. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you'll find something that's going to be cheaper and likely better, um, and less crowded. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, a just better experience all around. Yeah. Um, okay. And then be realistic in your travel goals. So we talked about the national parks pass, the, um, America, the beautiful pass, um, it's an annual pass and it's $80, uh, and you can get into all of the national parks parks on that pass for a year for for just that one eighty dollar free fee eighty dollar fee <laughs> fee um so if you're going to a national park if you know you're going to go to a national park and you have plans to go to more than one national park um think about how many times you're going to use that pass in a year and decide if it's worth buying the whole pass or just paying the the uh, entry fee. It's usually the entry fee is about 30 bucks. Yeah. And they 20. usually last for about a week. Yeah. So 20 to 30 bucks per park. If you're going to be going to three or four parks, then yes, absolutely. Get the, get the pass. But if you're only going to one park be, for one week, be honest with yourself. Yes. It's like, am I actually going to come back to a national park? Yeah. You know, that's just a, that's a, that's a, um, not a willpower, but a, um, it's realism. Be, yeah. Be it's realistic. being, being real. If you're going to Southern Utah, yeah, buy the $80 pass. You're going to get use out of it. Yes. You know, if yeah. you're going to hit up all five of the parks down there. So, for uh, sure. Yes. Okay. Um, and then lastly, have a plan, but be flexible. So, um, especially when we're talking about free campsites. So, free campsites are always going to be first come, first serve basis. Mm -hmm. So, have a plan of where you're going and, and, make sure you do your research of that area, but then be flexible. If you get to an area and you're dead set on one campsite and somebody's there, I mean, they're there first. That's, that's all there is to it. Um, so be sure you know the area well enough to, or you've researched the area well enough to have a few alternatives there. Mm -hmm. And then also like arbitrarily like driving around once you find a campsite, that's never a good idea. So always like using the map, looking at the map, you know, that's, that's going to save you so much time and frustration. And once you, f once you know what to look for on the map, which this will be part of our finding free campsites, um, basically lesson, if you will, in the future, um, you'll, you'll, you'll see what they look like from, from the satellite view and yeah. then it'll be easier to find ones going forward. Um, yeah. So I think that's pretty much it as yeah. far as that goes. Yeah. I think that one's basic and that one's not just free, free campsites, but, but in general, Anything. as you're traveling, have have a plan but be flexible with everything because things change and mm -hmm. your plans may change you may get sick and oh not uh, want to yeah. go I, on a i had an idea of brewing uh, okay go for it <laughs> okay so as far as also like being flexible it's like yeah it's like have a plan a but you know also have a pretty good idea of have a plan b but like you don't need like here's my plan a here's my plan b here's my plan c and here's my plan d because if you need four different like solid concrete options like i'm going to go here then here then here then here then here if you need to have all those you're never going to get anything done it's going to be like um analysis paralysis and then you're never going to have an adventure word use. yeah it was pretty good, right <laughs> yeah so that's pretty much it honestly as far as our list yeah goes, that's right? everything that i had on my list so um, yeah so this is part one i know this is this is the less glamorous part of uh of how we afford to travel um 
we're going to be doing another video next week that's going to be talking about how we make money on the road and it's going to be a great video it's going to be a fantastic video but how we make money on the road isn't like your it's not going to be your, um, I don't know, path to success necessarily. Maybe you'll pick up some gems from it, but you know, it's, we hope so. yeah, we, we hope so. But this is going to be how we make money from the road and what we do isn't necessarily going to work for everybody. But what does work for everybody is ways to save money. That way we don't have to make as much money on the road. And really, I think that's kind of the overarching theme. Exactly. Do you have anything else to say? No, that was awesome. Okay. Okay. So anyway, um, you're going to be having some icons pop up. Uh, one of them is going to be for our van life tutorial playlist. Uh, another one is going to be checking out our blog. And that one's going to go to our index of our van life, uh, van life build, everything like that parts, products, all that kind of stuff. And the last one's going to be a subscribe bowl. Uh, so be sure to subscribe and share this with anybody who you think might find it useful. So anyway, until next time, see ya. Bye.